Hello again, Fishalots. Now, before even jumping into the myths, let me ask you this when it comes to trolling. Would you rather be out on the ocean, on your boat, or even on the bank all day just staring at the water, catching absolutely nothing? Or if I gave you the option to troll and taught you how to troll, would you prefer trolling if I told you that you could go home with 10 fish that day, 15 fish that day, catch a ton of fish that day? What if I told you that you're gonna catch really big fish that day because that's what the fish want is some bigger profile file baits trolling through the water and you're going to be able to catch that. Would you go for that or would you go for struggling to cast and catch the fish yourself? 90% of people out there are going to say, I would take the troll and catch a ton of fish all day and have a great time out on the water all day rather than just staring at my fishing rods. All right, what if I were to tell you that dispelling myths about fishing and opening up your mind to new tactics is a great way for you to absolutely catch a ton of fish and catch a lot more fish than even your buddies catch when you go out there each and every time. Would you do it? Would you try it? I bet you would. Now, what happens is, is there's a ton of information out there on the internets and all over the YouTubes. And quite honestly, it's terrible information sometimes. I want you to build those fundamentals so that you could fish and catch a lot of fish and then adapt your strategies accordingly to catch even more fish. That's right, that's what we're all about here on the channel. So in this video, we're gonna dispel five myths that have to do with trolling that could absolutely kill your fishing and make you miserable out on the water. So let's get into the video and let's dispel some myths. So here's the first myth, is that trolling just is not that fun because, you know, the gears in the rod holders, the boat might be doing all the work or whatever the case might be. A fish is a fish is a fish, fish a lot. You go out fishing for the day, if you catch 20 fish, that's a great day, you know? Yeah, do you prefer to jig them or cast them? Sure, right, everybody does. But sometimes that's just not an option. So by trolling, you could actually maximize your time out on the water, catch a ton of fish, and learn what those fish's preferences are for that day so that maybe either on a different day or later in the day, maybe the tide's gonna change, maybe the wind direction is going to change, or maybe just the fish's habit is going to change, or their preferences change throughout the day, you're going to be in much better position to take advantage of that and catch a ton of fish if you stick to a troll and you actually learn what the preferences are of the fish that day. Okay, now here's a couple of things you could do too, where this is also a huge myth, is one, if you're kayak fishing, the best thing about trolling with a kayak is that when a fish actually hits your line, whether you're drifting or you're trolling, that bite literally goes right through the kayak. So you can feel that fish bite pretty much right up your tailbone into your spine when that fish hits and that's because a kayak's made of plastic so if you really want to have a ball out there and those fish are spread out and you want to cover a lot of ground drift or troll and you're going to catch a lot of fish you can see it here in this video where i'm doing that exact same tactic for big old catfish and trust me when those catfish brought down that line you can feel it throughout that entire boat and it's fantastic the other one is of course you could simply Hold the rod. If you're trolling and you really are desperate to feel that bite, let's say you're striper fishing, which, you know, that's the best part about striper fishing, in my opinion, is just that initial bam, and then you hook the fish, hold the rod. There's no problem with that. Take the rod, put it like into your hip or just hold it and have the ball. If you're catching, you know, 10, 12, 15 fish in a day, you're gonna get quite a bit of bites while you're holding on a rod and that can be a blast. The other thing is, is you can literally just walk around and troll. If you're on a, if you're on a lake, a pond, whatever, just make sure you're holding the rods and walk around when you cast it out. That's troll. And a big fish is a big fish is a big fish. If you catch a trophy fish, like the biggest fish you caught in a long time and it's on the troll, most people could care less how they caught that fish. They are thrilled to death to get a trophy fish, their personal best fish, whatever the case might be if they're trolling and they catch the fish versus if they're casting to it and they cast the fish or they catch the fish, right? So a fish is a fish is a fish. Just keep in mind, you're going out there, you want to enjoy your time on the water, you have kids, right? You want them to catch some fish. Trolling is just such a great option and a lot of people thumb their nose to it because it's just not as fun. And that's 
that's just something that people say and other people kind of swallow it hook, line, and sinker. I can tell you, trolling is a ball. I absolutely love it. And the best part about trolling is when that line goes down, you don't know if you have a small fish on there, a big fish on there, a marlin, a tuna, a shark, whatever the case might be. You know, you just don't know it's on the end of that line when you're trolling. And that is really a ton of fun. Okay, we briefly touched on this in myth number one, but how about myth number two here? And that is, well, trolling really only applies to like a boat or a kayak, does it? I can tell you absolutely not. I can't tell you how many times I'm in a lake, a pond, a river, whatever, fishing from the bank. And what I'll do is I'll cast my line out there and I'll just walk, you know, always be fishing. There's a tip from Johnny Fish a lot. Always have the line in the water and always be fishing. I can't tell you how many bass fish a lots out there. Largemouth bass experts make fun of me because when we move spots, I throw that line over and I'm, you know, tugging behind the kayak or the boat, you know, like a little John boat or something going two miles an hour, a crank bait, a spinner bait, whatever the case might be. I can't tell you how many huge largemouth and smallmouth bass I've caught doing that. It's absolutely amazing. Everybody stares at me like I have 10 heads. Oh, yeah, you got your line in the water. You really don't know the structure there. I could be new to the lake. That's a great way to find it. It's great. And it's a lot of fun. I'm holding the rod. I'm jigging. I'm working it. And then when I have a fish, you know, I'll typically cast in that area to see if there's multiple fish there or if I can feel why fish were holding on that spot. Maybe there's some rocks there. Maybe there's a tree. Maybe the contour changes. Maybe grass is growing there, right? There could be a ton of things that could indicate why fish are holding at certain spots. And that's what's so valuable about trolling is it can tell you where fish are, where you may have otherwise overlooked that area and not caught any fish. On to myth number three. All right, so let me ask you a question. You're looking at all the fishing reports. All your buddies are telling you where the fish are. You know, do you follow the fish reports? Do you follow that massive fleet of boats out there or people shoulder to shoulder on the bank fishing in the same area? Or do you try to find your own spots? Does FOMO dictate where you're going to fish? Well, I would recommend no. What I would recommend is you use trolling to find your own spots, just like I said in the previous tip, but you're staying away from the fleet. You find your, your spots, your fish away from predators. Human beings are predators and human beings will shut down a bite more than anything else in the sea, on the bank, wherever. Animals are very aware of human behavior and human actions wherever we are, right? And we are the top predator on planet Earth. Make no mistake about it. So if you have 100 fish in an area and you have 50 boats fishing over them, they could absolutely kill that bite, whatever it was, lickety splits. And even if the fish are available to be caught, you got 50 boats over them. So just by simple math, if there's 100 fish and 50 boats, you realistically have a chance of about two fish. Meanwhile, if I'm the only one on a spot and I'm trolling and I found a brilliant spot via the troll, now I could be the only boat on a spot with 20 fish and I have access to all 20 of those fish. Great day, same thing in a pond. You're shoulder to shoulder with people fishing on the bank and you find your own spot. You could have a whole pod of fish. You could have a whole school of fish just to yourself, even on a bank and you could find these fish by trolling. I did that even in the Great Lakes fishing Ontario. Here's, you know, here's a shot of young Johnny fish a lot, right? I noticed the fish were spread out. So, hey, I saw water fishing even at a young age. I was like, bam, time to saltwater fishing tactic in a freshwater lake. And we caught a ton of smallmouth bass and I absolutely loved it. And we caught them on a troll. It was great. And I held the rod. So I felt that smallmouth absolutely blast my spinner baits and crank baits when we did it. And it was absolutely fantastic. Moving on to myth number four here. And this one hangs a lot of people up. And of course, if you're trolling, you're using heavier gear, heavier lures, and you got to use the big lures, right? The big mojos, the big bucktails, the big crankbaits, whatever the case might be. And, and sometimes that works, right? Sometimes the preference of the fish is bigger profile lures, but other times it's smaller profile lures. And I covered this on a previous video I just did. You can check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below on how to determine 
determine the different lures and speeds and all that kind of stuff when catching fish. But the important thing to keep in mind here is, is that you should be switching it up because day to day, these fish change their preferences. So mentality is if I'm trolling, I need big gear, I need heavy gear, and I need the big old lures, bigger the bait, bigger the fish you're gonna catch, right? Not always true. Don't fall into that trap. Make sure you're switching up your baits. Make sure you're switching up your speeds, your colors, everything. I can't tell you how many times I was on a troll and those fish were big, big fish, were honed in on smaller profile baits. Now you can check it out right here in this footage where we're using small, small seven inch baits here to catch really big fish. And that's a small profile bait because the striper were honed in on peanut bunker. That's right. So we were not going to go to these big mojos when the fish were not eating full size adult bunker. They were eating peanut bunker, which are much smaller if you don't know what a peanut bunker is. And we caught just a ton of fish. So just keep that in mind. Sometimes you go with the bigger bait and catch big fish, but not all the time. Sometimes the big fish really do want that smaller profile bait. And all right, so myth number five, and this is a big one. And that is, what is the skill level involved when you're trolling, right? It's a low skill level. The boat's moving, you just put it in drive, head off and you're good, right? That's not a real fish a lot, fishing those kind of baits and those kind of tactics. Let me tell you something, nothing can be further from the truth. Trolling is very, very technical and there's some really, really important nuances to it and fundamental skills of fishing that you absolutely have to know to maximize your time trolling and use your lessons learned from trolling to then adapt your tactics and fish the way you want to, usually casting to the fish and catching them or rod in hand and catching them. The only way you're gonna be able to figure that out on a lot of days is by honing in on the troll and honing in on what those fish want. Now, if you wanna learn those fundamental skills and how to build your skills so that you could do that and outfish everybody else out there on the water, go ahead and click on this video right here where we dive deep into every sort of tactic you need to know for you to master the troll and catch a ton of fish. All right, fish lots, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you out there on the water.